So today we're going to do atomic orbitals and electron configuration. We're going to start with atomic orbitals and these are approximate areas where electrons with a specific energy should be found within a single atom. They represent a 90% probability of where you would find a specific electron. So when we talk about orbitals, it's not necessarily the electron doesn't have to be right there, but there's a 90% probability, probability that that's where it would be. And there's different types of orbitals, S, P, D, F, Gs are, they do exist, but we don't know of atoms that have them naturally. Um, you'll need to know the shapes of S and P orbitals. So first we're going to look at an S orbital. It has a spherical shape, looks like this. And each shell of electrons in an atom has one S orbital. These are P orbitals, and this is what they look like. They look kind of like figure eights rotated upon themselves. These are 3D images, and there are three P orbitals in every shell of electrons that has electrons. So this is what I said a little earlier. So we can have up to one single S orbital in a shell and up to three P orbitals in a shell. There are also orbitals called D and F orbitals. These are D orbitals. And these right here are F orbitals. You do not need to know the shapes of these at all. It's just interesting to see how they are. What you do need to know is that you can count them. There are one, two, three, four, five D orbitals. And in any sublevel that has F orbitals, there would be seven F orbitals. Yeah, and they all have, there's these funky looking ones, and again, you don't have to memorize what they look like. All right, so the term shell is often referred to as a level or energy level, and each shell or energy level of electrons also has subshells or sublevels. So we talk about different shells of electrons or different energy levels of electrons, and then those within a shell you can be divided into smaller subshells. And subshells are written like this right here. And the meaning, if you see a 1s, that means it's the s orbital in the first shell. So the number in front is the shell number, and the lower the number, the closer you are to the nucleus. So the number 1 means you're closest to the nucleus, the number 3 would be farther from the nucleus. And a 1s is the s orbital in the first shell. And you can fill these in if you figured this out already. 2s would mean the second shell, and it's the s orbital in the second shell. 2p sublevel would be all the p orbitals in the second shell. And how many p orbitals are there? 3, hopefully you got that. 3D, the D orbitals in the third shell of electrons. And how many D level sub, sorry, how many D orbitals are there? One, two, three, four, five D orbitals. And a 3P would be the P orbitals in the third shell. How many P orbitals should there be? Three. Okay, so the number in front tells you the shell number or energy level of an electron. And the letter tells you the shape of the orbital in the subshell or sublevel. Now we're going to move on to electron configurations. And these tell you where all the electrons in an atom are located. And we use the periodic table to identify an element's electron configuration. So this looks just like a periodic So if you notice, here's a real periodic table. And here's what we're using. So the first two columns in the periodic table, we use this as a tool. This is not where, like, these boxes are not actual electrons, but we can use the periodic table as a tool to figure out where the electrons are. So the first column, two columns, we would assign to the S's. The last six columns we assign to the P's, except for the helium over there. The middle, we assign D's, and the bottom of the periodic table, those two rows at the bottom, we assign to F. Now your period number, the row that you're in, um, your S's are the same as your period number. Your D's, notice, are one less than the period number, so period 4, 3D, period 5, 4D. Your F's are two less, so period 6, these are four F's. And you might wonder, what's going on here? Why is this, there this funny arrow? Well, if you look at the periodic table, you'll notice we've got number 57 and number 72. These actually all belong right in here. And every periodic table makes a little note, sometimes an asterisk, asterisk or something, showing that 
the elements in here are missing, but we couldn't fit the periodic table on a single page if we opened up this whole area here to the right and stuck these in here. So we put these down at the bottom. However, you have to realize those elements actually are here. And again, those elements, those would represent the F blocks. So let's do this. The way you do this is you go left to right, top to bottom, and you just count boxes. So first we're at 1S. So we would write 1S, and we count the boxes, and there's 1, 2. So we write 1S, 2. The 2 is a superscript. That 2 at top represents how many boxes we went through. We go to the next row, and we get to the 2S, and there's 2. We're going to go up to and including carbon, so we count 2 boxes. Carbon, if we look at the real periodic table, carbon is right here. We're going to count all the electrons up to and including carbon. So carbon's right here, so we're in the 2Ps, and there's 1, 2, 2P electrons, so it's 2P2. All right, let's do another one, arsenic. Let's see, where is arsenic? We need to know where arsenic is. Oh, here it is. So let's see where that is on our periodic table. That would fall right here in the four Ps. Okay, so we start at the top, 1S, count your boxes, 1S2, 1S2. And that means there are two electrons in the 1S sublevel. Go to the next row, 2S, two boxes, 2S2. If you can do this on your own, go ahead. We hit the two Ps, we count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it is two P six. And we keep going. Three S two boxes, three P six boxes. So three S two, three P six, four S one, two, four S two. Now we count the Ds. We're in three D now. We want two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 3D, 10 electrons. And remember, these boxes just, this is a tool. These boxes aren't actually electrons. This is just using the periodic table as a tool to get the configuration. OK, arsenic ends here. So we have 4P, 1, 2, 3 boxes. And that's it. OK, bromide ion. Ions are a little tricky. So bromine is right here. Bromide ion, remember, bromine is in the negative 1 column. So we will have one extra or one less? We're going to have one extra electron, because if we have a negative charge, we have more electrons. So we have one extra electron, which means we will have 36 electrons, like krypton. That does not mean bromine turned into krypton. We still have only 35 protons. We just have 36 electrons. So we will do the electron configuration all the way up to the 36th box, because we have 36 electrons. So go back to here. We're going to go all the way up to here. So I'm just going to call it out, and you can fill it in, and then I'll uncover everything. Or you could do this on your own. You can pause and do it on your own. So 1s, 2 boxes. 2s, 1, 2. 2p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2p, 6. 3s, 2. 3p, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3p, 6. 4s, 1, 2. 4s, 2. 3d, 10 of them, so 3d, 10. And then 4P, we're going all the way to this box. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4P, 6. There you go. Now, you might notice that these two have very similar beginnings. It takes a long time to write all of that information down. So there is something called a shorthand configuration. Um, to do this, you write the element that's a noble gas one row above the element you're trying to find and you put that element in brackets. This says, I have all the electrons that this noble gas has. And then you write all the electrons in the row of the substance up to and including the substance. If the substance has the same configuration as the noble gas, you can just write the noble gas in brackets. So carbon, let's do carbon. Carbon. Remember, the noble gases are here. So we go to the noble gas one row above. That's helium. We'll put helium in brackets. And then we do all the electrons up to including carbon. So these are the two S's. So we would have helium in brackets, 2S2, 2P2. And there you have it. OK, let's look at arsenic. Here's arsenic. We're going to go to the noble gas, one row above, write it in brackets. So you write argon in brackets. And then we'll have all the electrons up to and including arsenic in the row of arsenic. So 
4s, you have to count 1, 2, 3, 4s, 2, 3d, remember these d's are actually one less than the row, so 3d, 10, 4p, 3. The p's are back to the row number that you're in, and there you go. Now bromide ion, that one's actually really easy to do because bromide ion, negative 1, same configuration as krypton, so I can just put krypton in brackets because that says I have all the electrons that krypton has. Okay, now, elements that have F electrons. Lead. So we're going to do lead right now. We'll do shorthand. So we're going to put xenon in brackets, XE, XE in brackets, and we're going to go all these electrons here. The key is, notice, right here, we have to include all of these. So we'd have 6s2, now at this point, we don't write 5D1 and then 4F14 because we're going to go all the way through the Ds to get to lead. So we're going to write 6S2 and then we'll count all the Fs. And remember, Fs are one less than the row you're in. You see four Fs right here. Okay. So 6S2, 4F, and we count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 4F14. Now we have to do the Ds. Ds are one less than the row we're in. These are the sixth row, so these are five Ds. So it's 5D1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 5D10. And then the Ps. We have two of them. They're in the sixth row of the periodic table, so they are six Ps, and it is 6P2. And there you have it. Now, you might notice for this one, I use the periodic table as the tool. I did not use this tool. You will get to the point where you don't even need this right here. All you need is your periodic table, and you can do electron configurations. They become very easy, and that's it.